We're now going to do the same thing for type 2 cross-sections of the production function that we did for type 1. And again, there's a better resolution copy of this sheet of paper in the class handouts that's on the website. So we start with graph number 1. You can see there's a standard type 2 cross-section of the production function. First convex and then concave. That's the total product of water curve. Q on the vertical axis, water holding fertilizer fixed on the horizontal. To get graph number 2 with Q on the horizontal axis, which is we want Q on the horizontal axis because we need Q to be on the horizontal axis for all the other graphs, we need to rotate around a 45 degree line. It's a little more complicated to do that here than it was for type 1. So that's a 45 degree line. And that's a 45 degree line. Uh, let me make that one a little bit different. Then you can see in the beginning In graph number one, the black line is below. So in the beginning of graph number two, the black line needs to be above. Then there's an initial. Then there's a middle portion where the and then graph number one where the black line is above. So in graph number two, it's got to be below. And then in graph number one, the black line finally at the very end, way out here, ends up below. And so in graph number two, at the very end, the black line needs to end up above. And that's that's what happens if we, if we continue like this. So we've successfully flipped graph number one around a 45 degree line. To go from graph number one to graph number two, the horizontal axis stays the same. The vertical axis changes from water to dollars. These dollars are variable cost. Sh we could call it short run variable cost. I just left out SR. Again, the way you go from two to three, two is W. 3 is variable cost, which is the price of water times water. So that involves taking number 2 and then st stretching it out vertically if the price of water is greater than 1, squashing it in vertically if the price of water is less than 1, and leaving it the same if the price of water is equal to 1. Bottom line is, regardless of what the price of water is, graph number 3 has the same basic shape as graph number 2, and and the basic shape is the only thing that's that we really care about. So we have graph number 3. Now to get to graph number 5, the relationship between those is that graph number 5 is short run total cost. And short run total cost is variable cost plus fixed cost. We have variable cost from graph number 3. And so all we need to do is to add fixed cost to graph number 3 to get number 5. Fixed cost is a you could graph it as a horizontal line, it's a fixed amount. And so basically, f to go from 3 to 5, you take graph number 3 and you shift it up by the amount of the fixed cost. So this would be fixed cost. And graph number 5 has the same shape as graph number 3, only it's shifted up. Then to get graph number 7, you simply superimpose graph number 3 and graph number 5. Again, graph number 5 is going to start at fixed cost, uh, graph number 7 is short run total cost, and it has the same shape as short run variable cost. So that's how to get 1, 2, 3, 5, and 7. We're next going to have to get the marginal and average of 3, which is graph 4, 5, which is graph 6, and 7, which is graph 8. And that'll be on the next video. Before I move to that, notice that as we uh, two things, as we said before, the shape of short run total cost and short run variable cost is the same, and therefore the marginal of short run total cost is going to be the same as the marginal of short run variable cost, and so we just call it short run marginal cost. And you see that reflected in the equal to sign here and here. 
And another thing is the we've got the gap that we studied between short run average total cost and short run average variable cost. And as we said before, this this gap, the difference between short run average total cost and short run average variable cost is short run average fixed cost, which is short run fixed cost over Q. So this this thing on the right is the length of uh, this line. This is the length of this gap. And as Q goes to infinity, that goes to zero. And so that gap gets smaller and smaller and smaller as you go from left to right. All right so in the next video, we'll do in, in detail the average and marginal.